I'm in Steve Houston. I got my notepad here. I got something to share everybody. I got my lanyard on because I have appointments tonight. Hey, stay professional. Be a better agent. Make sure you got a lanyard on when you go out into the home. This week's video, hey, by the way, if you're just stopping by, you've never been to this channel before, my name is Steve Houston. Do me a favor. If you love the content today, look around. There's a lot of videos on here uh, from just looking at the industry, deciding it's for you or not. Uh, to some training, to some mindset stuff, dealing with the six inches between your two ears. There's a lot of stuff available on this channel. Uh, we're all about financial services here. We talk about the IMOs. We talk about the companies inside those IMOs. We talk about the comp plan. We provide third-party documentation to back up my rhetoric uh, if necessary. But the bottom line is we're here to support you and to provide some training that you may not be getting anywhere else. So at the end of the video, if you like it, Give me a thumbs up, make a comment on the video. I try to get back to those within 24 hours. Mash the, the subscribe button, hit that bell, you get instant notifications, and join the community here because uh, I get a lot. I got one guy today who said, Steve, your videos inspired me. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. By the way, we do have a series every week that's all about your questions and my answers. So continue to send the emails in. My email is in the description of this video. You can send me an email, ask me anything. I may answer you direct and answer it on the video. So look, I want to address the new craze of digital IUL sales in our industry and why I don't believe it's going to work long term or even short term for that matter for the agent. And this goes on my personal experience and as well as agents that we've had on our team that have tried digital IO sales, because let's not be honest, they paint a pretty good picture. It sounds great. But notice, I didn't say that it won't work for the companies. It may very well work for them, but this channel is not about what's good for the insurance company. It's all about what's good for the agent, you and me, right? So let's start with the foundation of agreeing on a few core principles of the advantages of you and I working inside this industry called life insurance and see if it plays out. Number one, residual income, building a residual income. Well, mo most of these uh, digital IUL companies, there is no residual income, okay? Number two, we're building our own book of business, which is where those residuals come from. And if we wanna build an agency to create that leveraged income, which continues to grow into our retirement, we have that option, right? What main thing, building your own residual income, owning your own book of business where that residual income is going to come from, and the ability to build your own agency, in that spirit, what determines that we get the results that we're looking for? Well, number one, persistency. Persistency means the percentage of your business that stays on the books beyond the chargeback period, right? So in other words, the longer it stays on the books, the longer you and I are going to get paid. So let's drill that down a little bit more. What determines Persistency, number one, product selection, right? Does it fit their budget and their needs? That's why I never upsell a client, right? I want them to buy what they can afford, what they understand, they feel good about, or they're not gonna keep it. Doesn't do them any good, doesn't do me any good, right? Number two, it's about the relationship with your client. This is a relationship business, okay? First of all, life insurance is an emotional-based decision. It's very difficult to have that conversation when you're not face-to-face -face developing and building a relationship. So what determines your relationship building? Well, number three is, we've all heard about it before, people buy from people they like, know, and trust. Okay? So keep thinking about this stuff now as we drill this stuff down. Can you build a relationship of like, know, and trust on the phone? Well, number one, it's very, very, very difficult. Number two, you become nothing more than a telemarketer competing on price alone. And when you compete on price alone, let me tell you something, the competition is stiff. Just Google it. When it becomes only about price, you're gonna be shopped all over the internet and the lowest price wins. And when it becomes about price alone, combined with no relationship, no like, no and trust relationship, you've entered into an area which you cannot control, which is, so what is that area that you can't control if you have not taken the time to sit kneecap kneecap face to face with that client? Here it is, replacement. The next guy or a gal agent that walks in that door sitting face to face with your client kneecap to kneecap that builds that like, know and trust relationship and took the time to do due diligence, do the research, pre-qualify them, sit down in front of them, now knowing what you sold them 
has a relationship with them because their face-to-face, eyeball-to-eyeball replaces your product. So what affects that? Number one, depending on when that replacement happens, it could occur in the chargeback period, which is usually nine months, wiping out your entire commission that you earned. Some prorate it, some don't. Number two, loss of all future residual income on that book of business, okay? So let's wrap this up. Bottom line, if telemarketers can do what we do as agents and what all these digital IUL companies are telling you that's being done right now, oh, there's some great people doing some huge numbers. Sure they are. Let's see the real numbers. Let's see what their book of business looks like a year from now. Okay, they've given up the residual income, so they're basically an employee. They walk away with absolutely nothing when that job is over with. They can be terminated at any point. In the last five, 10 years you spent writing that life insurance business, which you should get paid on for the next 20 years, you can get paid nothing. Zero. Because you don't own the book of business and there is no residual income. But again, the bottom line is if telemarketers can do what we do as agents sitting kneecap and kneecap face to face over the kitchen table in the home, insurance companies would not need us. They would simply open up call centers, eliminate the agents, and be far more profitable. Right now, I don't see that happening, right? Here's the facts. So far, I've not seen a single agent succeed long term when they've joined a digital IUL company. They all return or end up quitting the business altogether. Again, in recap, number one, you do not own your book of business, so there is no residuals. Number two, very, very, very low persistency on those sales. And number three, there's no opportunity to build a relationship with that client long term so you can go back and get referrals and also other products that you may be able to offer them in your book of business like annuities, right? College funding for grandkids. All those things are off the table. It's a one and done sale and you're out the door. Now, as always, the opinions on this channel are just that. They're my opinions from my personal experience in the industry and with my experience watching my agents come and go, right? And be taken away by those head fakes in the industry. Look, it sounds easy. You can sit at home, be in your pajamas, you don't need to shower or brush your teeth, you get an incoming phone call, you answer it, you sell a policy, you make two grand. It all sounds easy. But take into consideration the ramifications of that digital IUL sale, you becoming a telemarketer and less of an insurance agent. And what you're giving up by accepting a position that offers you no possibility to own that book of business and no possibility of residual income. It's slightly better than a job, but not much. But again, I'll point out, it's my opinions, do your own research and come up with your own opinion. So in closing, I get questions all the time about what's the best IMO. First of all, I don't think the IMO is the only equation. You've got to find a coach and mentor that's with the right IMO. It's going to be there with you day to day, case by case, handling the phone script, helping you in the home, teaching the skills necessary that are required to succeed this business that is with the right IMO. I'm not saying it or listening it's important. It's very important. But I believe also that coach and mentor is. Number one, they've got to own their own lead program. They have to own their own direct mail house. Uh, for lead gen, not just buying from third-party vendors. If they're buying the lead from somebody else, they can't control the quality or how many times that's been sold. They've got to have technology, free, no charge, no duplicated, redated, recycled leads. That requires that technology. No recruiting required to be promoted. I'm going to say that again. That's number four, but I'm going to say it for four and four B is no recruiting required for you to get paid what you're worth or get promoted. No cap on my income if I choose not to recruit, but just want to be a good salesperson and support my family. Number six, no memberships. I said number two. Number six, no memberships. Number seven, home of a support that's exemplary and for free. And again, the last thing is, I would put it number one, you got to find the right coach and the right mentor that's leading from the front, that still put their name on an application that can teach you the skills of the business, period, okay? And as I say in all my videos, the surest way for you and I to succeed is to be determined to never quit. Notice I didn't say fail there because failing has got to be an option. That's how we learn. But if you quit, you're quitting on yourself. Bye-bye.